Hey everybody, welcome to Where's That Bar Cart, episode 14 of season two. I'm your host, Daryl Purvis, with... I am another one of your hosts, I'm Nick Dury. I'm Monty Scott. <laughs> for the audio only uh, listeners of this podcast, of which there are many, he just held up a lighter for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's a Zippo with a lighter. flame going. With a... Sorry, I'm Monty Scott. Yes, I, this, light, this lighter was given to me. It's a gold bar replica that is a torch. <laughs> My sister gave it to me. I don't smoke. I don't smoke crack. I don't, I don't really have anything to do with anything flammable, but um, I like it. So I thought you was sound like, you sound like you're being interrogated right now. <laughs> yeah, what just the sound of it? No, that you. I don't smoke crack. I don't smoke. <laughs> I don't. Uh... Yeah, I, I protest too much. No, I, mean, I really. I, <laughs> I'd like to, but I just don't like uh, combustibles anymore. Sometimes I breathe heavily into a fire. And on that note, uh, we have a really hot episode for you today. I guess. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, Canadian Hall of Fame uh, member. Uh, yeah. Two-time winner on the LPGA tour, uh, just you know, I don't even know. How to, like when we were growing up, she was one of the yeah. big names in Canadian golf, uh, one of the greatest Canadian golfers of all time, uh, Miss Gail Graham. Oh my God, what a get, Daryl! Good for you. This is incredible. Uh, You're fired. Yeah, yeah. Monty's lighting a lighting a candle for you right now. This is just we're so <laughs> excited. And honored and kind of humbled to have Gail on. Uh, she is, the, yeah, two time winner, as Daryl said, on the LPGA to an actual professional golfer who's won yeah. two tournaments. She won the 1995 Field Crest Cannon Classic and uh, the 1997 Alpine Australian Ladies Masters, both. Which, uh, if you look at who finished second, it was actually Kari Webb. It was. She yeah, beat her by, by one stroke, stroke Minus in Kari Webb's own country. Incredible. That's got to be pressure. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, when we started this podcast, we're like, ah, we'll get a bunch of comedians, maybe some sure. musicians, some actors. And then as we started to dig into it, we're like, we should probably get some golfers too. And, yeah. uh, and slowly but surely, we're getting some some good ones. And it's scary as fuck, if we're being yeah. honest, because it's, yeah. uh, you know. It's, it's it, easy to talk to a comedian about golf sure. um, because they just want to talk. Yeah, That's all they want to do is talk. Yeah. And when you have someone who's not only a much better golfer than you, but has built a complete career off of it. And it's so, <laughs> how come you like golf? Yeah. You know, you feel so <laughs> silly asking them questions, you know? So I'll try yeah. to take the pressure off you guys, because I think she'll recognize pretty quickly that I have no idea what I'm talking about. So, you know, <laughs> she'll be like, yeah, just let, let's let this guy talk. Talk to this guy a little bit. He. He needs some help, you know. Like so I think she'll... playing with a flame, yeah, <laughs> needs, needs our attention. Yeah, need, yeah. Let, let's let's talk, you know. So, uh, but it is amazing to have her on, on the podcast. The two wins is uh, oh my god! Um, in Such on the LPGA honor. is incredible. Look, I, yeah. I don't want, I don't want to embarrass her, so I won't say what the number is. But you could look up on Wikipedia what her career earnings are, and it's uh, unbelievable what uh, the the amount of money she has made from golf i would again i won't say the number but you look it up yeah. it's uh and pretty you're talking about like lpga during the yep. 90s it's not yep. like yep. people are getting paid a million dollars of a win you know exactly. you're talking about you're slugging for your money yep. and she exactly she made yeah she had a good career yep. and still teaches to this day and yep. uh we're excited to meet her so sit back relax and enjoy what I hope will be a very great episode. Yeah, I'm pumped. Enjoy Gail Graham, everybody. No, it's an honor to meet you. This is very yeah. exciting for us. This is great. Yeah, it's great to meet you. Thanks so much for coming fun. on. Yeah, this will be fun. We, uh, uh, we just recorded an hour ago with a comedian who was insane. So um, we're, we're, we're pretty excited to talk about golf now. So <laughs> yeah, we have a very varying levels of expertise in golf on this. Uh, we started with comedian tonight and now yeah. we're going on to you. So that's a pretty big. That's a big, that's a bit of a jump, hey? Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be honest. We're just talking about how we're kind of nervous to talk to you. Don't be at all. <laughs> Here, I'll make you guys feel more comfortable. You ready? <laughs> oh. well, there it is. <laughs> What's it say? I am not the cart girl. Oh, <laughs> that's great. That's we should scary, get those. We carry that in our golf shop. Oh, oh really? So great. Yeah. Are you in Florida right now? I am. Oh, that must be Balmy, nice. Naples, Florida. 
Very nice. It was hot today. Not much fun. I'm uh, in about four days. I'm heading close to your way. I'm going down to Myrtle Beach uh, for a golf trip. Uh, well, it's snow in Myrtle, you know. Oh, really? Oh, geez. Okay, not close at all. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a little ways away, yeah. <laughs> uh, good, yeah. Thanks for the geography lesson. We're not intimidated at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, how do you spend the entire winter in Florida? I live here. Per, I live here. Oh, you do. Oh, oh that's it. That's yeah, nice. Full time. Full time. Do you still go back to BC? Because I was looking like, did you have like a, a golf tournament in Kelowna or something? Did uh, it was a couple of years. It was a few years, a couple of years ago. But yeah, I had a um, in eighteen when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I did a pro am out there mm. and brought several of my friends up there, and we had a big time. <laughs> nice. Um, I go back. I've been back four times this year. So, oh wow, that's a long. Yeah. That's a, it can't be a direct flight from Naples to Kelowna. <laughs> I did. Um, I did find the most direct flight um, on my way back just before Christmas because WestJet had me staying there for much longer than I had anticipated. <laughs> and uh, I ended up flying from Kelowna to Seattle and then Seattle direct to to Fort Myers, which is oh, like, wow. wow. Yeah. So now I know that that's there. Probably actually would cost a fortune if you, you went that way because only one connection. And then you clear customs in Kelowna, which is brilliant. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. The that's reason great. I ask is because I looked at your the Facebook page for that golf tournament. It's still up. Yeah. And yeah. it has Megan Osland on. Say, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're talking to her on Thursday. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Are you like a mentor or a friend of hers or? Um, I've known her since she started playing until she, since she was 11. And so I, I taught her for a while and wow. then passed her on to my brother. And then she started working with Sean Richardson and went to school and turned pro and all that good stuff. So known each other, known each other a really long time. Small That's world. Great. Yeah. Just, a, just a quick question, Gail. Does Kelowna have the good customs? I would fly in there and they'd say welcome home and then I would fly back to the states and they'd say welcome home like, I, also I, people are friendly to you funny. anyway yeah <laughs> just a nice home. person yeah. Yeah. that's no. great okay all right uh, so I, we, uh, we no we're started? already we're going we're, oh are we part of it. yeah oh, yeah this sure. is oh I didn't I would have asked better questions <laughs> no, 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 for sure. I want to know, and Gail, we're going to get into your start, but I kind of want to know what your day-to-day -day life is like now, full-time in Florida. Like, what is a typical day look like for you? Wow. So I'll give you, I'll give you today. So I have two dogs. So I'm out of bed at 6.30. Dogs are out, you know, doing their thing and get ready, have a quick breakfast and on to the lesson tea um, by eight o'clock. Um, today it happened, it just so happened that I had a playing lesson a three hole playing lesson um, for about an hour, at, which was really fun to get out wow. on the back nine and, you know, just ex give someone an experience of they don't have any idea what they're doing on the golf course. So maybe I could show them what they're actually supposed to be doing. Yeah. And then a full day of teaching. I think I had six or seven lessons, six, cool. six lessons today. And yeah, I'm, 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 this might be Tito's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> General uh, demographics of who you're giving lessons to, is it consistent or is it all over the place? Well, uh, so I'm the director of golf at, or director of golf, director of instruction at Esplanade Golf and Country Club in, in Naples. And our demographic is the newly retired, um, okay. anywhere from about 50 to, uh, I think my oldest student is 87. Wow. Uh, my youngest student is eight. So, but the majority of them are between 50 and, and 70 and very avid and just, you know, trying to, trying to get into the game after years of being, you know, moms and dads and working and, and then like, oh, we just bought a house and we get golf along with that. So I'm going to learn to play. So it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to watch them progress. I can imagine. Are they, so are they all pretty much new to golf or can you recognize early on someone with a little bit of talent that, that you can do something different with? Oh, we got, a, I got a few of those. Yeah, I definitely have a few of those, but the, you know, the majority of them come from country clubs up North, um, mm. anywhere from Ontario to Quebec to um, the Midwest. We have a lot of, a lot of people from the Midwest, a lot of Minnesotans who are avid, avid golfers. So it's a, you know, it's a kind of a mix of, I'm, I'm going to say probably 30% are absolute brand spanking new golfers. Yep. And then the rest of have some kind of experience. Um, probably a pretty small percentage are, you know, under a 10 handicap. So that's a totally different discussion than, than most other people. So. 
That, that's wild. Did you, uh, I mean, I'm, you've been doing that um, a long time, but did you find it challenging with the new people just to be like, I'm sure you, sometimes you must be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> Try I, usually get, I'm the, I usually get the, I'm the worst player you've ever seen. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting because a lot of people who start later in life, especially after 50 or so, they, and if they haven't, women especially, because just by the demographic, they didn't have sports to play when they grew up. There wasn't mm. a lot of organized sports. I mean, I was one of the early Title IX um, recipients of Title IX scholarships. So, and I'm old, but I'm not as quite as old as some of them. Um, but it's amazing how that there's no body awareness. So mm. you kind of have to teach them about, okay, this is what your body actually does in the swing. It doesn't just swing your arms. Yeah. You actually turn your body. But right. if you turn your body, holy moly, you hit it so much, it's much easier to, to play golf. So um, it's, that's the, that's the joy of it now is to see people get it like, ah, yeah. ah, light bulb. And then they start to realize that when you throw a ball, you post onto your front foot. When right. you hit a forehand in tennis, you post onto your forward foot. And guess what? You do the same thing in golf and ah, yeah, ding, 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 ding. It's, um, it's pretty cool to see all of them sort of grasp that. And what about with a uh, what about with a single digit handicapper who comes to you? Are they coming to you with a very specific problem to try to so, like fix or yeah. uh, mental? It's right between here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, you know, one awesome. of the things that I can I can say that I learned um, just just from playing, but also as a, as an instructor and learning from other instructors is that you know when you get to be about a single handicap or a single digit handicap your golf swing doesn't change on the golf swing on the golf course you don't lose your golf swing but everybody if you hit one bad shot what are you trying to do find a swing mm -hmm. well how about you just slow down and you think positive thoughts and you pick a target and you swing to it like simplify it you know dummy it down and all of a sudden you're back in the game right um i read i read dotty pepper's um new book um well new book it's an adult book which she's had been written, writing kids books but it's called Letter, Letters to a Future Champion. And in that book, her instructor that she'd gotten all these letters from had offered her up different books to read when she was a kid. One of which was a Sam Sneed book. And it was mm. The Education of a, of a Champion by Sam Sneed. And he gave an example of a guy he was playing with in a tournament who after one poor shot on a hole was basically just giving up. And he got in his face and he said, don't give up. It's one shot. Don't mm. give up. And the guy beat him by one shot. <laughs> but it proves a point. You know, you only need one really good shot on a, on a hole to yeah. actually save your hole, right? So don't ever give up on it and just keep keep grinding. That's the thing you got to keep doing. I, uh, Nick, before I was going to interrupt yeah. you, when you edit this, can you just cut this last couple of minutes out and send me that? Because uh, <laughs> I'm going to want to watch that about 18 times around. I'm going to watch that little <laughs> No, I was going to tell a story from one of Dr. Bob Rotello's books. Uh, yeah. I can't remember which one, but he was he tells the story of um, Tommy Armour rooming with uh, no, sorry, I think it was uh, it was Gary Player rooming with Davis Love Senior uh, when they were young on tour, and they were they were rooming together. They were playing some tournament. They came back, and the greens were really slow. And Gary Player was like, "Oh man, I love these slow greens. They were fantastic. It was amazing. It's so great to putt in." And then the next tournament, they go somewhere else the next week and they're rooming together again. And they were like lightning fast greens and Gary, they're back in the room and Gary player comes back. Oh, I love these fast greens. They're so amazing. It's everything's true. And, and Davis Love was like, what the fuck, man? Like just pick, <laughs> what, what is it? Is it one or the other? And Davis Love was like, I don't care. It's whatever, whatever it is. That's all that matters. Like yeah. whatever I'm playing, that's what I, that's what I lean into. And that was the, yeah. the big lesson. That's a great lesson because there are certain things you can control when you're on the golf course and there's certain things you can't. Mm -hmm. So the only thing you can control is you. So yeah. if you have somebody who's really slow in your group, you can't control them. You just got to, you've got to find a way to deal with that yourself. And so once you learn to con control your human, you know, what's going on with me. And this is a great, this is just a life skill. When you yeah. control what you do and you don't worry about what everybody else is doing, you're far more successful at completing whatever it is that you want to do. That's a great point because the number one thing that drives me nuts is playing with someone who's slow 
Yeah. And then I think I have to go so much faster and it to ruins make, my game and it to make up for drives it. me yeah. nuts because I always grew up with a pro who was always like, you know, make sure you keep your pace like you need to be ready golf. And then yeah. these people who start playing golf, no offense, Monty, people start playing <laughs> golf in their 20s. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a slow golfer not a slow golfer. I'm, not, I'm not even no slow. he's not a slow golfer but I'm just I, do, I do take people, like eight practice swings yeah you do yeah. we're getting that down to one, ask you, at most okay. <laughs> why why <laughs> I don't really know I, you, you know to be honest Gail I I all I can really control on the golf course is my bowels at best <laughs> And I, you, I, you, I've seen you. You can't control that. Oh I my god! <laughs> that is all that. Well, you know, you can control your drinking pace too. There's there. that. that. I'm sure. Well, <laughs> this is the highbrow journalism. I, I am assuming you were expecting from this type of podcast. This is about as as low as we'll go. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, I wasn't taking a shot so much. I was just saying people who just started in their 20s have never learned like basic things like, yeah. you know, ready golf or yeah. fix your ball marks, stuff like that. Right. But yeah. it's the, the slow players. I'm just like, come on, just go get ready. Like, yeah. Go well, get ready. You know, it's funny because I'm teaching a lot of those people that are just starting. And that's mm. a huge part of it is there's nuances to the game that because I started playing, you know, when I was 13 years old and, and at a club where the members sort of guided you and they point things out like, oh, you know, you maybe should stand over here yep. instead of way over there. So you're, you're closer to your ball and you're ready to play. Oh, okay. Yep. So you start to do that kind of thing. So that's part of the conversation all the time too, is how do you get yourself around the golf course it, so that you don't feel like you have to rush. Yeah. Right? And then yeah. what do you do about the slow player? Well, the first thing I do is say, okay, so we're behind and you're holding us up. So no talking until um, we catch up to the group in front of us. Yep. Don't talk. Get ready. Yep. Go. Yeah. 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 You know, they always want to be telling a story or something. And... <laughs> no good. Yeah. Yeah. No focus on these people. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Or they can't control their bowels, and that just takes forever. <laughs> well, <laughs> I tried to pull this out, Gail. I I did my best <laughs> to distract. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll give a, a serious retort to to that though, or um, <laughs> addendum to that is like when it comes to the practice swings, I don't know why I'm doing them. Um, I guess I want to keep swinging until I feel a good one, mm. you know, okay, like, well, yeah, maybe it self. might be two or three, you know what I mean? Yeah. Note to self. You only get one shot at it. Yeah. Right. True. So take one practice swing that is focused on something, mm. right? So you don't take a practice swing just for the sake of taking a practice swing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You take one that, that it, it gives you a feel. So one, one of the things that I like to feel when I swing the club is, um, I know the club's going to go back and I know that it's going to come through, but how's it going to do that? So I want to feel that I make a, a good turn in my backswing and shift my weight and turn through. So I'm going to do that at half speed and I'm mm. going to feel the bottom of my feet. So when you do that, well, you're going to turn in your backswing and you're going to feel your weight on your trail heel. Are you guys all righties? Uh, Daryl's a lefty, but okay, Monty and I are right yeah. okay, so trail, so trail heel versus, versus lead heel. So when you turn back, you're going to feel your weight on your trail heel. Then you're going to mm -hmm. shift it to your lead foot. And then as you swing and turn through, you'll end up on your lead heel. Balanced. Swung, you, you use your lower body to actually swing the golf club. And guess what? It goes pretty good. When it's you great. start swinging it just with your arms, uh, yeah, all bets are off. No, I, so. I, I'll try that. I'll, I'll try to limit yeah, it to so one. Be, fo and... be focused on something. It could be mm. something like I... <laughs> My last lesson of the day was this little lady who actually has a pretty good golf swing, but she stalls when she gets to impact. Mm. And by, by that, I mean, she shifts her weight and then her body just faces the ball as she comes through and strikes the ball. I said, I want to see standing behind you down the line. I want to see cheeks. Mm, yeah, so right. I want to see you turn your, turn your hips through so I can see cheeks. And that, boy, did that ever register with her. So I said, here, you, this is what you do. You make a little turn with your hips in the backswing, you press on your left foot, and you turn your hips through. And guess what? I get to see cheeks. It's so hard <laughs> not making a comment about Monty's styles right now. <laughs> Monty, I want to see your cheeks. I wanna... <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I, this has been a revelation to me in that I didn't really know I was using either heel. <laughs> I, I didn't know heels were involved, so I was—I'll remember that. Toes? You're on your tippy toes. 
Well, I don't know. You never think about your heels. You know, I'm sure they're, they're always there. I'm yeah. using them now. Do you, do you guys play any other sports? We do. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. Not well, not anymore. We used yeah. to. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like, you know, anybody play hockey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I played hockey for a bit. Okay. So if you skated on your tippy toes, what's going to happen? Fall over. Oh yeah. Nothing good. I'm sure. But yeah. <laughs> nothing good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you you got you got a rock there on on your blade, so you got to be solid on the on on your feet for that, right? So all that's doing is when you turn, it's, you're shifting your weight, your your weight goes back to that heel. You turn through, your weight goes through, so you're solid on your feet the whole time. Mm. Yeah, like I I'm sure I'm using them to a degree. I just never thought about them before. So now at least I'll be like, oh, um, you know, a little bit on each now now. You have to turn your hips though too. Okay. Yeah. Just to say, yeah. just to... I, which, I imagine which... it's happening, but I don't you know, to the degree I don't know. Well, I gotta... you know what, Monty, I'm gonna say you don't turn your hips a lot. You're Monty's nope. very much a baseball swing. I think that was yeah. his background. Yeah. And yeah. it's very <laughs> baseball y. So yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be revolutionary Revelation for Monty. For him? No, yeah, yeah. It's, it's helpful for sure. So you good Canadian boys, um, have you ever started a lawnmower? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we always had an electric lawnmower, so wow, this is about bougie. plugging it in. I didn't well, realize yeah. it was bougie. What, what? Bougie to have a well, electric, <laughs> electric lawnmower. I, I had a push mower because my dad thought it was safety, but I was like, you know, he bought that for me for safety. He said, but you could put your whole head in there. I'm like, what? <laughs> what kind of safety is this? It was a madness. I asked. So there's a reason I asked it, but I asked that to one of our members, and he looked at me and he goes, "Dude, I was born in Brooklyn." Hmm. we don't even have grass yeah of course <laughs> but you know when you start a lawnmower you you pull or snow or snow blower for that matter mm -hmm. you, you pull right you pull and when you pull that right hip or that back trail hip turns mm -hmm. that's pretty important you gotta let it turn oh. well, like, like it which i feel like a key like we're getting technical here but a key yeah. for that, that that a lot of people who are new to the game don't really realize is to do the charlie chaplin feet Right, yeah. it's to spray sure. at your feet because you can't yeah. turn that hip if that if that back heel if that back foot is square, you're it not really getting way. yeah you're For not sure. getting, getting around on that hip. For sure, especially when you know you're at an advanced stage. Yes, exactly. Turn those yeah. hips. Don't turn those out. Yeah. Turn those yeah. those feet out. Great. Speed up. <laughs> okay. Well, you you kind of mentioned getting into golf at 13. Is that when you started? Oh. That is old by today's standards. I was going to say, yeah. but for as elite as you got, that seems rather old. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, <laughs> so so my, my dad worked for the Royal Bank of Canada, uh -huh. and I have th I have three older siblings, um, uh, so all and one younger. So all five of us were born in BC. Okay. And then when I was eleven, he got transferred to Portage in Maine. He was the, he became the general manager of Portage and Main Branch. And so he moved to Manitoba and part of his compensation package was a, a golf club membership. Oh, wow. And at that, at that point, it was just basically my brother and I left. So my brother's, my brother is um, uh, the head professional at the Kelowna Golf and Country Club out in BC. Mm. And so it was just us left. So of course my dad, he wanted to play golf on the weekends where a lot of the kids that I met were going to the lake you know, Lake of right. the Woods and going yeah. up to Gimli and all that. And, and no, I, I, we got a golf club membership. So at first I wasn't too thrilled. And then one Sunday, my dad said, why don't you just come along and walk? We're going to go play nine holes. You might as well just come and walk. So I did. And I tended the flag and I chased after, you know, a few balls and, and we got done. And I said, okay, I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so can I play next time? And my dad was like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the next Friday, I went out. Uh, he took me out to the club, and the and the um, the head professional found a set of ladies' clubs that were in the back, and he showed me how to hold on to the club, mm -hmm. and 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 how to stand. And then two days later on Sunday, we went out to play, and um, we played the West Nine at at um, at St. Charles, and the, it's, it was called the Woods Nine. And that the guy that designed that was a disciple of Donald Ross. The okay. other two nines, the South Nine and the North Nine, were designed by Donald Ross and Alistair McKenzie. Oh. So it was like, like now I look back and I go, holy crap! Like that was like beyond surreal to be able to to play on those those designers golf courses. Anyway, so we go out and we play, and I get up there on the red tees with my mom, and we finish, and you know I put out everything, and 
we go into the pro shop and the pro says, so how, how'd you do? And my dad said, she shot 59 for nine holes. Jesus. And his immediate response was, did you count every stroke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my dad said, yeah, counted every stroke. And we, and she putted everything out. Wow. So I was a bit of a natural, but as now that, you know, I'm so much older and I realize when that pro put, showed me how to grip the club, it was in a way that was so natural to me hmm. that it made it easy to make contact with the golf ball. Now, hmm. you know, you see lots of grips where you got the hand underneath and on top and people just want to glom onto that that club well if, if you hold the club correctly and especially with your trail hand mm -hmm. it's amazing how much easier it makes the golf swing hmm. so i've spent you know years since i i retired learning about this from some of the best player but best teachers in the world and biomechanists who are like geeky about how the body moves and they'll tell you certain things that i go okay i believe you because right. i'm not getting into all that other sh schmutz about it so um it's been something that has I think given me a leg up in teaching because I can take somebody who's not hitting it very well and get their hands on the club correctly. And all of a sudden they're like, well, this feels way easier. So is there, is there a difference in your mind between, I assume one of them is either overlap or, or interlock. Nope. Nope. It's more, it's more in, so there's, you know, there's three grips, 10 finger overlap yeah. interlock. So that's your choice basically. But when you take a golf club and you, you hold it, and especially with your right hand, if you think about where's my palm facing of my right hand, mm -hmm. is it facing the target? Is it facing the ground? Is it facing the sky? Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of a combination in there. And depending on how you move, you, if you get your hands in the right place, it's it, all the levers line up of your body and you just go, wow, that was easy. So Damn. Kind of fun. wow. So Things you we're know, right? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, we're all comedians, and I, it's it's always interesting talking to comedians about their first time ever going on stage and doing comedy because sure. it either goes yeah. really well or really terribly, sure. and then which which then leads to the second time they they do stand up. You know, does it go well or not? And usually catch the bug in one of those two times. So, did you catch the the golf bug right away with that fifty nine? Immediately, immediately. Yeah? like literally okay. immediately. It was like shoo, and it sucked wow. me in. Um, St. Charles had a really great junior program. And so we were able to go Friday after, Friday evenings and it was girls at six o'clock and boys at seven o'clock. And, you know, they, it was called junior swing lessons and we would go and hit balls. And there was about 50 kids wow. and almost half were girls and almost half were boys. Of course I was 13. The boys were nice looking, you know, <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> And, um, and it was a place where my brother and I could go and not have to be supervised by our parents and just mm -hmm. go and go play. And so we would be there all day, all day, like five days a week, at least. Wow. And so it was, it was something that just sucked me right in and fairly quickly. So within a year and a half, I got invited to play in the world junior in oh San Diego. My God. <laughs> and Jesus. I got down there and it was like, I suck really bad compared right. to these American kids who've been playing since they were five or six or seven. And, you know, there was, there was Heather Farr and there was Phil Mickelson and, you know, it's like, what the hell, what am I doing here? And um, that just sort of like went, Oh, you know, let's just put more pennies in the, in the machine to make it keep going. So um, I got lucky that way, you know, being able to go and do that kind of stuff really, really early. But I mean, it's not just about being lucky. The fact that you went down there, saw people that were better than you, and then didn't quit. You went, I need to work harder. Yeah. That's, I that's a that, different yeah. mindset. Like that, yeah. that's an important <clears throat> mindset to have to become. That's why you yeah. got to where you got to. Yeah, it is an important mindset. You know, golf is probably the hardest, you guys might agree with this, the hardest recreational game to play. Oh, a hundred percent. Easy. right yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah. or cribbage and, cribbage is pretty tough <laughs> yeah. i have you know what my my i have every other member of my family plays that i have no idea how to play that I'm tough. Yeah. it's tough it's i'm with the you golf of card games <laughs> <laughs> i'm well, with you golf is, golf has got to be up there but um every other recreational game you don't count all your mistakes <laughs> yeah uh, yeah if you yeah. play pickup well, basketball I, and counted everything you did wrong yeah, but mo most other games, there's somebody else judging what you're doing. True. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and yeah. they're telling you when you did something wrong. You're you're yeah. the only one who can tell yourself you've done something wrong. <laughs> and I think that's one of the I, I think that's really 
um, one of the attractive things about the game is that it is so challenging and it is so personal. Yes. You know, yeah. Um, I remember just a few years ago when Jason Day was the number one player in the world and he shot 64 on Saturday at the Tour Championship. Mm. And he had 24 putts, which was pointed out by a guy in the media room who's like, what am I going to ask him? He shot 64, he's leading, like, what are you eating for dinner? You know? Mm. So he said to him, you, you had 24 putts, you hit 40 shots. How many of those 40 shots did you hit exactly like you wanted to? And he kind of went, mm, seven. <laughs> Jesus. He's the best player in the world. So why are we so hard at ourselves? Yeah. We're hard on ourselves when we play and we miss hit, miss hit the ball. Hey, yeah. Nick, when you're editing this, could you take that little <laughs> chunk out? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, that's a, it's a great point that you make because, and I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast, but if you, if you're an avid watcher of golf, of PGA yeah. tour, yeah. it warps, it warps your brain as an amateur player because Ooh. you start to think that that's what golf is and that's what I should be doing. And that, yeah. and like, like, so when we go on the golf course, par is not for us. Par is for them. Right. Par is for the right. pros. Bogey right. is for us. And right. if you, if you add a stroke to every hole and just, shoot for bogey it, it's amazing how easier the game becomes and and you how could much be three under under par your yeah. par right in a minute yeah. the um i taught a i gave a putting lesson last week to a guy who was he was like and he's he, this he was a single digit handicapper and he says to me i only make like a third of my eight footers like what is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus and i said Christ. well I said, do you, do you have any concept of what the stats are like on the PGA yeah. Tour? And he said, no. I said, well, a PGA, PGA Tour players on average make 50% of their eight footers. Yeah. No way. I'm like, yeah, way. That's just, you don't see all of that happening, right? Yeah. You see the best of the best of the best playing their best. Yes. And so you see those guys make some putts, but the, the regular dudes, you know, the guy that's Rory McIlroy when he's not in contention is missing eight foot putts. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So it's a, it's one of those games where you have to, you have to decide what your, you know, what, what are your goals in the game and what are your um, happy things and you're going to yeah. hit good shots, but you also hit a whole bunch that are just good enough. Yeah. You got to be okay with the good enough. Yeah. You know? exactly. that one's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> we had a, uh, we had a, a caddy on who's caddied on the PGA tour and he was telling us something I'd never even thought of that some of the best golf to watch that you would never see televised is what happens Friday yeah. with, with players trying to make the cut. And this is sure. kind of, I want to transition into your uh, career as a PGA uh, uh, or LPGA uh, pro, but that that is some of the best golf that you could possibly see, but Absolutely. you're just, you're never going to see that on, no. on a telecast no. on a Friday afternoon. So, sometimes you got to grind it and grind it and grind it out. I remember playing with Pat Bradley in, in, uh, Springfield, Illinois, one year. That's a, that's a hell of a name drop. We haven't had a name drop like <laughs> know, that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> one of my favorite players. Um, you know, in a world golf, LPGA and World Golf Hall of Famer. So there you go. Um, so, first of all, she never used to, she would never call you by your name. Really? You hit a shot and she'd go, Great shot, pro. <laughs> oh, thanks, Pat. You know, the whole way around. Hey, pro. Hey, pro. So, finally, one day I challenged her and I said, You don't know my name, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so I know the name Gail, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm digressing, but I'll come back to the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, she, she, uh, when I turned 45 and I got to play on the Legends Tour, I go out to play a practice round at my first event, and she's on the second green, and we come to the second tee, and it's a short car three, and she comes flying back in her golf cart. She says, Gailsy, I got to apologize to you. I'm thinking, what did you do? <laughs> I don't know what she did. <laughs> And she said, I know you used to give me a hard time for calling you pro. And she said, and it, it was part of my DNA to not let anybody in. Huh. So I would call you pro. So I didn't feel any emotion towards what you were doing. She goes, but I'm gonna call you Galesy now from, from now on. I'm gonna call you Galesy. <laughs> so from then on, I've called her pro. <laughs> 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 but I but I played her I played with her in Springfield Illinois and and the golf course we played at was called the rail and we used to joke there was no jail at the rail because the trees <laughs> was a muni golf course and the trees were so small that you could hit it two fairways over and still you know have a shot back to your green mm -hmm. and 
I didn't have her, her card as we were playing around and we got to the scoring tent at the end and she's sitting in the middle and we're calling out scores. And then the, the volunteer says, oh, Pat, you shot 68. Have you shot 68? How the <laughs> hell did you shoot 68? You were all over the golf course, like all over the golf course. She said, yeah, but every time I hit a green, I made birdie. <laughs> wow. Uh, and every time I missed a green, I got it up and down and made par. So she says, not about hitting a great, it's about what do you, how do you score when you're just, you know, off yeah. and you just got to keep grinding at it and grinding at it. So I never forgot that. And so I, that's the, you know, kind of sort of comes back to that Sam Snead, never give up on it. Yeah. It's never going to happen. That's the uh, best rounds have come when I've hit it like crap. Right. That <laughs> yeah. is, I, I'm writing this down on a piece of paper right now. It's not about hitting it great. No. <laughs> Good enough. Say, good, good enough, good, my good friend. Monty, it's good enough. Yes. Yeah, so I know. Accept mediocrity. Underline that. Uh, interestingly, I have a friend down here in Naples, and when we, we play um, at her club, we play a game that I call the game of mediocrity hmm. because it's a card game. And so for every one putt, you get a point or you get a card. And then if you one putt for birdie, you get two cards. So anytime you get a birdie, you make two cards. But if you three putt, you lose a card. So when you're hitting a really great shot in and it lands next to the flag, you're like, get off the green. Get off the green. Put <laughs> it on the fringe, right? You want it to go off so you can one putt, make it really easy to hit down. So the game of mediocrity. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. I like it. How, uh, at, at what age did you know that competitive golf was going to be your future? Well, like I said, I got, I got hooked in pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, I just, I, I was a, I played every other sport I could play up until I was 13. And then I continued to all the way through high school. I was not a one sport athlete. I played everything. And so I liked, I liked the competition. And then I really liked the competition when it was only me. Mm, you know, I didn't have yeah. to rely on anybody else. And so I, you know, I started to play a lot of stuff around Manitoba and started to win some junior events. And, and, and then it was like, you know, maybe I could go to school. And, and so that kind of, you know, the competitive to say, oh, I got to go play well enough to maybe score a, a scholarship. Yep. And then once I was in college, um, down at Lamar University in beautiful Beaumont, Texas. Hmm. Sounds <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Just saying. A lot of pretty places in Texas and Beaumont's not one of them. <laughs> for for uh, people who uh, are just listening to this, she made a heart sign with her fingers. <laughs> uh, really loves it down in Beaumont. To our Beaumont listeners. Yes. <laughs> we have a few towns like that in, in Canada. You oh, know, sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so Don Co. Jones, or Don Co. at the time, was a senior when I was a freshman. So when she finished college golf and she went to the LPGA qual qualifying school, it's kind of like, well, she got through that and she's going to play, you know, competitive tour golf. Mm -hmm. On any given day, I could beat her. Wow. So I'm like, ah. And I still had three years of development in college to, to go through. So it, it, you know, kind of put a little seed in there and, and then, you know, coming home to, to Manitoba and then to BC, um, you know, getting to play on the provincial teams and, and play those championships and go to nationals was, it just fueled the fire for it. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. Top of like playing competitive, how did you learn to win? Like we were talking in the introduction, yeah. one of your wins in Australia, you beat Kari Webb by one stroke. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about the pressure that must have been, <laughs> is insane. Like... <laughs> The funny thing is, is when you're in that, you, you don't, what you, you tell you, once you've learned to be in that situation, you don't really think about the pressure. You're, mm. you're just trying to stay focused on one shot at a, you know, hitting one shot at a time. And, you know, there was many times when I was a junior where I crashed and burned, mm. you know, I think of, here's my, my example is I think of Mike Weir, you know, leading, I think it was the PGA championship and shooting 80 on Sunday mm -hmm. when he was paired with Tiger, yep. like, Talk about crash and burn, right? You're doing it in front of the whole world right then, but you have to, you have to get, com or I say more comfortable because it's an uncomfortable. No, nobody gets comfortable with it, mm. but if you're not uncomfortable, then you're probably not going to do well. You, it makes you focus more. It makes you stay in the moment more, be present, like be where your feet are as you're hitting each shot. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing with golf is you, you can't think, okay, I'm going to birdie this hole. Uh, okay. How am I going to do that? You have to break it down to, okay, got to hit a decent tee shot. I got to hit a good shot to the green. You know, hopefully I'm going to make a putt.
but you have to deal with each of those shots as they come because you could roll your ball off the tee, hit a fabulous, um, you know, three wood into the greenside bunker and hole it for birdie. Yeah. It, 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 you just never know with this game. It's so true. Like you, you really never know the next shot may be the greatest shot you've ever hit. Yeah. In the, yeah, so you could like depth some, yeah yeah completely yeah. so yeah. I think if 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 Wikipedia is accurate you turn pro in eighty eight and then yeah. one in ninety five those my first those, my first LPGA win was ninety first LPGA yeah. win was yeah. ninety five yeah. so those seven years was it a slog was it hard was it like mentally how did you deal with oh. those seven years. I know so, that's a big question, but this no, is that's a lot good. deeper that's than you think three comedians would be asking. It's a great question. So my the first two years, 88 and 89, I played on on what is now known as the um what is it known as now? They have a new sponsor. Uh bleh, it'll come to me. It it's was okay. the future tour back then. Okay. So it used it was future tour, it was Duramed, it was, you know, it's had many iterations, but I won an event out there. Mm. And then two weeks or yeah, two weeks later, I won the CPGA women's championship. Oh, wow. So those two wins kind of went, okay, I, you know, I, I've won at the junior level. I've won at the amateur level. I've won at the college level. Now I've won at the mini tour level. Okay. So tour level should be fine. And then you go sure. out there and you are this little itty bitty fish in this big gigantic pond. And yeah. you stand on the range next to the likes of a Joanne Carner. Mm -hmm. And the sound that the club, the ball makes when she hits a driver is like, it's like a gunshot going off and you're like wow Jesus. my club doesn't I don't sound like that <laughs> all right right <laughs> and then you play with Julie Inkster and and she gets up and down from three trash cans over you know <laughs> it's, it's just insane so you, it's like you go back to where you started from almost and because the the situation kind of like it, it makes you just like girl fan all over the place and that for the first year I think that was really difficult to deal with and mm -hmm. then as it turned out, I missed 13 straight cuts by one shot. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, I had to go back to qualifying school. Yeah. And it was like, holy crap, that's the worst thing. That, talk about pressure. There's pressure because you, your whole next year depends yeah. on four rounds of golf. Oh, God. And you're like, holy crap. And in my era, the qualifying school was at Sweetwater Country Club in Sugarland, Texas. And I would say it is the, one of the top three hardest golf courses I've ever played. Where wow. would you point to describe Sugarland, Texas? What would your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which body part? <laughs> it's just where it was. Uh, anyway, the golf, course, the golf course was so hard, like so hard. And my first trip there to qualifying school I played really great for three rounds. And then the final round, I shot, I three putted the last hole Ugh. to shoot 80 Ugh. and miss qualifying by one shot. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Stabbed me in the heart. <laughs> and my parents had come down and they had a uh, fifth wheel at the time. So there we're driving. Now I have a car too. So we're driving back to Canada and we're driving through Southern Washington and it was 89, and that's when the, um, or 88, 89, anyway, whatever year is. It was the, the year of the um, huge uh, earthquake in San Francisco. Oh, uh, 89. I think that was yeah, 89. 89. So we're yeah. driving home, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, right. can anything else go wrong this, this, <laughs> this week? <laughs> so it was pretty crazy. But, um, you know, once I got through that kind of thing, you, you, just, you just build your experience experience gives you so much depth that you can go back on for to remind you of how did I handle this really crazy bad situation mm. or what do I do with this you know easy situation like wow I just birdied the first five holes now what do I do okay forget about it what did what were you thinking when you stood on the first tee okay tempo let's you know let's just pick your target and hit it to your target and then you go down the fairway you do the same thing you know it, it's amazing um, a little freaky. So over the course of those years, I I moved up the money list and moved up the money list and moved up the money list. And, and so you start to do things that get you excited again about being a part of it. I remember in 1992 when I finished third at the in Chicago and qualified for the, the Nabisco Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Well, that was like going to the Olympics for us. Yeah, right. Super, super, super cool. 
And then going that same year, 92, and going qual having to Monday, not Monday qualify, but qualify for the US Women's Open and making it and getting to play Oakmont mm. when Oakmont had all these beautiful trees. And, you know, play uh, 63 holes of the 72 hole tournament with no three putts on those greens and then go, holy shit, I'm in second place. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> and, you know, then you start to think about the outcome and yeah. you forget about, I need to focus on the shot that I'm about to hit and yeah, just hit, yeah. it and hit it again. And so I ultimately ended up finishing sixth, but I was like, oh, this is like, wow. Yeah. So you learn, you know, you learn along the way, which I'm sure you guys are doing too, right? Well, <laughs> different lessons, I suppose. But I want to, uh, and we got to get to the par five questions. But yeah, because I, I, I think gotta, I can hear your dogs in the background. I'm worried yeah. they're not able to control their bowels. <laughs> yeah, uh, like like Montana <laughs> golf course. But I got to ask, your first win on the LPGA tour is, is 95. Yeah. Uh, what is harder, Saturday night or Sunday morning, mentally for you? Oh, great question. So that particular event. Last event of the year, Charlie Meacham, who is the commissioner, is retiring. So they're mm. having a black tie dinner. Mm. So we fin I finished playing, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon. I go hit a few balls. I do media. Now I'm like racing. Are you in the lead the after three? Sorry. I'm, at, I'm in the lead after one shot. I had a one shot lead. Okay. So now I've got to get back to the hotel, change, drive downtown in Charlotte and go to this dinner. And I thought, I didn't have much time to think about anything. And then I got there and I thought, wow, I got a captive audience in this room. I'm going to walk around and ask some questions. Oh, geez. So I went to Patty Sheehan and to Beth Daniel and to Pat Bradley. And I said, okay, you have this situation. What do you do? You know, so I, I kind of had a plan oh. when I went to bed that night. So I actually slept pretty well. And then when I got up the next morning, of course, I got the late tea time. So you got mm -hmm. like, yeah, okay, got to pack up, pack up, take your time, you know, anything to distract and then once I got on the golf course, I was, you know, I was pretty calm. Really? Um, but one, yeah, one of the questions I asked him was, so the 18th hole there was a hittable par five. And what you had to hit over water on your second shot if you were going to go for the green. Um, if you hit it down the left-hand side of the fairway, you ended up with less than 200 yards. So I hit this big rope and hook off the tee and it goes down the left-hand side of the fairway. And the player that was in second place, Tammy Green, she tried to hit it too hard. She hit it into the fairway bunker. So I knew she had to lay up. So I got a one shot lead. She's got to lay up. Do I go mm -hmm. for it? Cause I'm 170 from the hole. Jeez. And this is what I said, what do you do? And they said, it all depends on the situation. You know, how, how, what kind of club do you have in your hand? You know, if you've got a, a fairway wood in your hand, you're probably not going to go for it. If you have an iron in your hand, absolutely go for it. So I took one more club than I needed. I hit it over the back of the green into the grandstand and it came back to the green. Okay. And then I rolled a, rolled a little putt or a long putt down about 10 feet short of the hole. In the meantime, Tammy hits her third above the hole, misses the putt. So now I know I have two putts to win yeah. and then I made it. So I won by two. Oh so, my God. yeah. So it was kind of, you know, it, you, you got to plan things out a little bit and you, yeah. worst case, best case scenario and just see what you did in that final round. I rolled a tee shot off the 11th tee. Like, really? Old top did. And thank God it was in North Carolina and it was all the grass was dormant because it rolled to the fairway. <laughs> and so then I had, I had 230 yards to the hole and I hit my three wood and it lipped out and I tapped in for birdie. Oh my God. No way. <laughs> so yeah. It's kind of one of those, when it's your day, it's your day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I think we might have to have you on for a second episode. This is, I would love to. This we is could, this is unbelievable. We'd I don't like want to, to do a whole anthology. <laughs> <laughs> but let's do monty do you want to lead us into the par five uh listen the guy selling corn in the parking lot told me this is a par five <laughs> great a bar uh, five? gail i uh, <laughs> don't know if this is an easy question for you or not your favorite golf course this is a hard this is actually a really hard question is it okay. and um, you know, I've played a lot of great golf courses around the world mm. and I, I have to come back home and I have to say, I'm going to say two because I can't differentiate the two. That's okay. Um, St. Charles, mm. St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg, just one of the most iconic, beautiful, cool places. You know, it's got the big Tudor clubhouse and just the whole atmosphere there. Um, and the golf course being the front nine, Donald Ross, the back nine, Alistair McKenzie, like, how can you get, you can't get better than that. Right. Amazing. And then, um, the Kelowna Golf and Country Club. Huh. fun nice. fun 
golf course, super fun golf course. And, you know, I don't get to play it enough. So, you know, every time I go and I get to play it, it's just like, wow, this is like a, you know, it's a walk in a beautiful park in a great place. It's always in great shape. So it, it, that's probably the two that I can say hard to differentiate. Sure. So you, you didn't let me pick the, you know, the name ones. So <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Kelowna's a beautiful yeah. spot. It is. It is. Yeah. Have you played? Uh, so the the follow up is is other than Augusta, St Andrews, and Pebble. Which course yeah. do you want to play? Have you played all three of those? I have not played Augusta. Okay. Um, one day I'd love to, but mm -hmm. at the same time I kind of think maybe I don't want to because it's such really? it holds such an incredibly, you know, cool place in my heart that I don't think I want to screw it up. I just yeah. imagine myself playing great there. But um, that question I'm going to say Cypress Point. Because mm, nice. I think that's just talk about iconic golf courses and, and um, you know, you, th you talk about Pebble and Pebbles and to me, Pebbles an okay golf course in a beautiful situation. That's great. If you go just, if you go just <laughs> up the road, Spyglass is yeah. one of my favorite golf courses mm. and it doesn't get, I mean, it's obviously in that rota with for the tournament, but yep. it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves because it is a truly a great golf course. So, but That's Cypress what I thought about Torrey Pines. I thought Torrey Pines yeah. is an okay golf course. It's the views. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's it's no it's not that big of a deal golf course wise. It's yeah, just like every other one. It just so happens that you know there's guys jumping off a cliff and hang gliders next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to jump off a cliff too that day. <laughs> I guess it's taboo to shoot at them. Yeah, no. <laughs> they take <a> <laughs> Uh, Mon Monty's from Scarborough. Just, uh, for <laughs> uh, yeah. You can jump off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I really don't want to rush these questions. But this is this is uh, this is us being like Canadian comedians, feeling like we're taking up too much of your time. But we're no, just we're all. enjoying this so much. This yeah, is so, so much, much fun. So oh thank you. So okay. Much. So uh, it's a little bit of an obvious question, but you can put together your ideal foursome with a caveat: no, no fellow uh, PGA or LPGA tour players. Uh, anyone alive or dead who is rounding out your force? Okay, so the very first would be my dad. Ah, so my great. dad passed away um, in 2017 at the age of 91. Mm, wow. On his 91st, no, on his, wait a second, on his uh, 90th birthday, he shot 89. Oh my oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. With three golf clubs. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah. It was like the closing senior day and you know, he, I think he picked his, his five wood, a seven iron and a putter and shot, shot 89. So you know, he was never a fantastic player, but he just loved the game. And it would just be, I can hear him laugh in my head and it would just be so much fun to be able to play with him. Again. Oh, incredible. Yeah. And That's then he would probably have a heart attack because my second person, I got to say Bobby Jones. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. that would be a lot, right. The man yep. was arguably the best. Well, he was the best player of his era, but our, he, he won the first grand slam amateur and professional mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, he, he was so iconic that everybody kind of compares everything that everybody else does in the men's game to Bobby Jones. Yep. Still so, yeah, hundred still, years later, yeah. whatever it is, it's yeah. the same. Yeah. Well, even more mm -hmm. so. And then the third one, I don't know if you guys would have ever heard of, but her name was Alexa Sterling Fraser. Hmm. And I lived in Atlanta for seven years. And um, at East Lake, where Bobby Jones is famously grew up, there was a young lady who played there by the name of Alexa Sterling, who actually beat him in a junior tournament when they were like wow. 11 or 12 years old. And she went on to win the British amateur, the US amateur, the Canadian amateur. She was this superstar amateur woman player. And she played with Bobby Jones and, and went out on the USO tours with Bobby Jones hmm. um, for, for years and years. And then she married a doctor from Ottawa. His really? Last name is Fraser. And she moved to Ottawa and became multiple times the club championship, cl club champion at Royal Ottawa. Wow. So she had three kids. Okay. When she passed away, her kids each received a medal from one of those championships that she won. They had no idea oh that their God. mother had been this superstar player. Wow. And that, she passed away. There was a big, you know, it was coming up to the tour championship. And so they got invited to go to the tour championship. She lived across the street from Eastlake. 
And so they, they, you know, these guys are like, what? I had no idea. My mother, would, they just knew her as a pretty darn good golfer and, and, and our mom. So I would love to have seen her oh play on with Lori Jones and, and be a part of that. So, you know, I was really hoping that story ended where we found out that that was Nick's grandmother or something. Because Nick's from <laughs> Ottawa. <laughs> hey, you never know, right? Never it, it, know. it wasn't. No. no. There's, there's other golfers from Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, are, are there like other books about her or is this because i guess she just there is I mean, if, a... you, if you google her you'll you'll see some pretty cool stuff there was actually there's a movie there's a movie where stephanie sparks who used to be on the golf channel as a commentator she played alexa sterling in the movie oh wow and yeah it's pretty cool so um you know it's it's that she's obviously has canadian roots um grew you know gave birth to three Canadians and, and lived there most of her adult life. And, and she's sort of this missing link to, to women's golf way back when, which is kind of cool. That's a wild, that's a wild story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could, uh, I could relate to the kids. Nobody ever told me my mom was an internationally amazing golfer. Really? <laughs> she wasn't heard that from anyone. No, no. <laughs> no. I, it turns out know? I don't think she is. It turns out. Okay. <laughs> Everybody wants to question their mothers now. This is going to be a weird. I know, right? <laughs> right? Like, uh, I didn't know, I, if I didn't see pictures, I wouldn't have known that my mom was actually a pretty darn good figure skater. Oh, really? Really? I really never mentioned it. I'm like, who's this in this picture? Oh, that's me. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So How old were you when you found that out? Oh, gosh. Probably in my 20s, I would think. Wow. Yeah. Think and what's funny up. is my three older sisters all figure skated when they were kids. Mm. And then they got to me and they're like, yeah, no, it's too expensive. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't skate with a lick. So there you go. I think your life turned out okay. Yeah, yeah okay. I think you <laughs> I like the summer sports better. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, this is perfect as you're taking a sip of what might be filled with Tito's or not. Uh, on a hot summer day, uh, are you drinking on the golf course? And if you are, the bar cart comes along. What are you ordering from the bar cart? I'll tell you what. It took me a long time to be any good at drinking on the golf course. And I'm really? still not sure that I am. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so like the continuous drinking, you know, from the get go, that's a hard thing for me, but the birdie shots, I'm, yep. I'm all in, I'm all in yep. with that. So my favorite, so I, I have the can here. So Arnold Palmer's oh, yeah. very nice. and all your Palmer's with Tito's. Nice. That would be my absolute favorite thing in, in the nice golf. Now I could also have a really cold beer. That would be okay too. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> do they do they sell the combination Arnold Palmer vodka? Say vodka? Was it rum? Yeah. What was it? There vodka? actually is. Tito's there actually vodka. is a Tito's. canned version of that down here. I haven't actually I haven't tried it, but because I kind of preferred that it is more of a top shelf type of vodka rather than. <laughs> oh, you, you don't think they're gonna put top shelf yes. vodka in there? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> uh i mean it, these questions seem kind of trite talking to such an accomplished pro but but the the fourth question is either is around emotions on the golf course so it's either yeah. like you can answer either the angriest you've ever seen someone on the golf course or and or how do you keep from losing it on the golf course well and or Whew, sure okay. um okay so i gave a playing lesson to this member and I'm going to leave, remain nameless just in case he ever listens to this. <laughs> and pretty decent golfer, um, really bad knees, mm. right? And so had a hard time. He's probably starting to figure it out on his own right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> so he was at one time a Secret Service agent. Oh. Okay. So here we go out for this playing lesson. It's supposed to be a learning experience. And literally from the first tee, like he, he missed his tee shot into the right rod off the tee. And he's like, Ugh. wow, I mean, it's in play, right? And as we went, got fully around and, you know, and I'm hitting shots too. So, you know, I might hit it a, you know, a yard or two past him and then sure. a yard or two inside of him. And he is just like, his top is going to blow off. And finally it does. And he takes his putter, he, he misses his putt, he takes his putter and he wings it towards the golf cart. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. And he's looking at him and go, dude, you are not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but sorry, not sorry. 
<laughs> but but that's you know that's one of the things I tell people all the time is that most of the people you go to play with are not as good as they think they are. Mm. Right? Yeah. So when they start getting mad, it's like, okay, really? Are you that good? Like, are, are, are you paying your, your, you know, your kid's college tuition by playing golf today or, you know, so I got a little dog over here who's giving me the, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, but, but, so I'm going to ask, answer both questions really quickly, but okay, so, you know, like I said, I said earlier, golf is, is so personal. So you kind of got to ask yourself when you start to get mad, why am I getting mad? Hmm. Am I getting mad because, um, I'm not doing the things I'm, I, I know that I need to do to hit good shots or am I getting mad at the result? Mm. Okay? Most of the time we're getting mad at the result. So mm -hmm. if you're getting mad at the result, you need to go back and focus on what do I do to hit it well? And then all of a sudden it starts to take care of itself. Cause you have, to be honest, you really have no control of that golf ball. Yeah, <laughs> None, right? Yeah, right? right. Um, the best players in the world don't have control of the golf ball, right? You, you know, if, if you hit the ball with a a, a good path and a square club face it's going to go kind of where you need it to do but you could hit this beautiful shot and it could hit the edge of a sprinkler and yeah. bounce out of bounds right. so it's one of those things where there's no control and there's you know it's rubbing the green everywhere you have to take the bounces as you are so you know you're supposed to be out there enjoying it so it's a personal challenge you got to go okay why am i getting mad and if i'm getting mad then maybe there's some underlying thing that i really need to deal with All right um, but, you know, in, in, when you want to keep it together, you just, you really got to just slow down, first of all, because what's the first thing you want to do if you hit a bad shot? Swing Take harder. a drink? Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. That might help you, actually. Take a step back, just give it a shot, take a breath, but swing slower, okay? So get slow down. You want to be present in, in what you're doing. So when you address the golf ball, it's, you're in a play box. It's like being in the batter box, right? Mm. And, and you want it to be in that moment for the one and a half seconds it takes to swing the golf club. Mm. You think yeah. it would be easier than it is. <laughs> but we are so, as humans, we're so focused on the outcome that we forget about the process is how we get to that. And when you watch the best players in the world, they stick to their processes impeccably. Mm -hmm. And they don't waver from them. And you don't see them start to swing faster or harder or get out of control. They, they keep it on an even keel. Annika Sorenstam was the best at that. You never knew what was happening. Mm. She just walked, you know, walked along with like a Mona Lisa smile on her face. And you're like, what the hell is she thinking? She's smiling. She just hit it out of bounds. All right. Well, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's, um, it's such a great game. And it's like, we get, we're so hard on ourselves playing it. You just got to take a step back and go, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. To get yeah. It. I feel like that now. I'm not you know, I'm not as good as I used to be. So should I be expecting, you know, to be that good? And when I do hit those shots, I'm like, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go hit the next one, you know. <laughs> and Daryl, I've already uh, edited this and clipped it. For yeah, you. Don't worry. I appreciate that. I was just saying, it's funny because I, I have a bad temper on the golf course. But when I was a kid and I was practicing three hours a day, yeah, it made sense to be upset about it. It didn't make sense. But now when I practice for 30 minutes every two weeks, right. I should not be expecting that myself to be just exactly. constantly playing well. There's no way. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Cut yourself a little slack. Yeah. And I have all sorts of mental issues to begin with. So really, I need a psychiatrist more than I have a swim doctor. You know what I, mean? I tell you what, when I stand on the lesson tee and I have seven lessons, I'm going to say at least half of those. It's all about you got to learn to manage yourself. Yeah. So, you know, it's all about the psychology of it. And, and the, when you talk about human skills, it's things like how resilient are you? Yeah. You know, what do you say to yourself? Mm -hmm. That's a good question for you guys. It, can you repeat out loud what you would say to yourself in your head after you hit a shot? Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> I don't would you ever say to someone else what you say to yourself? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Or if you did, you would be considered the world's biggest fucking asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't no. like to repeat anything I say to myself ever on this on, on the air at all, ever, yeah. ever. <laughs> let alone hit a bad shot. No kidding, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Maybe that says something about you. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> what? I, th I, I think, think I actually, say a lot of stuff to myself. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm actually not that hard on myself internally. It's more 
I need to get this anger out. And uh, that's <laughs> internally, it's, well, uh, you're doing okay, Life Trail. It's going to be okay. But uh, uh, externally, no. You, you know, there was a time where Tiger had a really bad temper. Mm -hmm. And mm. his dad said to him, okay, you got 10 seconds. So you can do whatever the hell you want in those 10 seconds. But once those 10 seconds are over, it's done. Yeah. It's done. So he started to realize that for 10 seconds made it a whole lot harder to go hit the next shot. Yeah, right. You can do a lot in 10 seconds. Like no, the planes that hit right. the planes yeah. that hit the towers, that only took one <laughs> second. <laughs> you know? Oh my, yeah, what true. are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what wow. I think about when I'm hitting I a thought, bad shot. Those are I thought thoughts. Monty's bowels was the low point of this <laughs> podcast, but somehow. Point is, Ooh. don't give Daryl the 10 seconds. Cut him, <laughs> cut him no more, like, give him two. Two and a half? Yeah. Two and a half, yeah. two and a half max. Yeah, or or here, even better, here's the even better. Uh, play golf like John Rahm. Mm. Okay, think like a goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's goldfish a good way to go. Has a 10 second memory, boom, gone. Was yeah. there... Was there anybody who had a, like a legendary temper on the LPGA when you were playing? Oh, oh, Dottie Pepper. Dottie Pepper, but she never direct, she never threw things, but man, stuff would come out of her mouth and you'd be like, oh, I got to get out of her way. <laughs> and she never directed them at you. It was always towards herself, but it was uh -huh. like, a you never knew when it was just going to go. Poof. Wow. One thing I did hear her say, um, I was playing in a group with her and I learned very quickly that you did not say good shot, Dottie until Dottie thought it was a good shot. <laughs> so we're going along and my caddy, she hits the shot. My caddy says, oh, good shot, Dottie. And it hits the edge of the green and kicks into the bunker. And she looks at and she goes, keep your fucking mouth off. <laughs> <laughs> the two of us giggled the whole way down the fairway. He's going, I just got reprimanded by Dottie Pepper. <laughs> she very rarely did that. It was all about she was just a, you know explosive inside. She had high expectations for herself. So, and she wow. was so gracious to play with, which was great. She called you by your name. Mm. Nice shot, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, we always called her the doctor growing up. Doctor, just, just Dr. Doctor Pepper. Pepper. Doctor Pepper. So we always called yeah, her. I always so. wondered if yeah. that was like a nickname for her because it seems like the obvious one. Did you guys have a nickname for? Dr. Oh yeah, Pepper? she she she's that. I mean, you know, I I was called her Dorothy because it kind of ticked her off. So. <laughs> 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 uh i mean i don't know even this feels weird asking this last question but your favorite golf moment well okay i'm gonna say the 1997 australian ladies masters yeah okay you alluded to that earlier but it not just for beating kari and winning mm -hmm. so the year before that event i had played in an, in a canadian airlines event there you go i'm dating myself with <laughs> dave Barr. And I had, I had won some closest to the whole thing. And I won two business class tickets on Canadian Airlines. And of course, I'm playing in the States and Canadian Airlines doesn't fly in the States. So I'm like, right. okay, these are going to waste. So the LPGA scheduled uh, the tournament in Australia the week after Hawaii. And so I said to my parents, why don't you guys come to Australia? Here, you got the plane tickets. You know, plane tickets are looked after business class. It's going to be, you know, a lovely little trip. Uh, I said, you could, you, you're going to fly from Vancouver to Honolulu, meet us in Honolulu, and then go on from there. And, and you can stay a day or two in Honolulu if you just keep going out and then come back. So I remember my dad saying, and this was, he retired in 1985. So this was 12 years later. He goes, well, you know, it's tax time. <laughs> like you've had the same income for the last 12 years. <laughs> like you're worried about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so they decided they, they decided they would go. So they fly to us, they fly to, to um, Honolulu. They watched me play the final round in, in Honolulu and I finished in the top 10. So I was pretty mm. happy. And then that night I got on a Qantas fly, flight. They got on a uh, Canadian Airlines flight and we met in customs in Sydney. Huh. George, you hush in, okay? Shush. Sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> um, uh, anyway, so. We do the same thing with Monty. <laughs> 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 so um i go to get on a flight up to queensland and they go and rent a car and here are these two relatively elderly people <laughs> driving up the east coast of australia and they arrive on the first tee thursday morning and oh my God. when they showed up they realized that there were some other canadians there because they saw some canadian flags so they walk over to meet these people and damned if they aren't from saint charles country club wow so they knew we knew them 
like, what the hell, what are you people doing here? So this, there was a group of, of them that instead of going to Palm Springs or to Florida, they went six months to Australia. So I had this nice little group of Canadians following me. And as we went around the final round, when we got to the ninth or the 10th tee, Kari had a five shot lead. Wow. And, you know, everybody was kind of writing everything off and, and she kind of went into this sort of defense mode, which I hadn't seen her do. You know, she was rookie of the year, the year before, Hmm. and we're playing in her home state and her family's there in the whole shooting match. And she, it's not that she imploded, but she was just sort of knocked off her, her game a little bit. And in the meantime, I went four under on the back nine. Jesus. And on the 17th hole, I was one shot back and I, she three putted. No, she made, no, she made, so she three putted and I made about a 12 footer for my second putt. And so now mm-hmm. we're going to 18 T tied. And she was still, still so mad about playing 17 the way she did that she didn't hit a very good shot in on 18 and she ended up really far from the hole. And I, my caddy talked me into three wood off the tee. And so I was in the fairway. I hit my shot onto the green. I was about 20 feet from the hole. She hits her first putt and she's still away. Damn. And up until recently, I had forgotten who our third in the group was. And it was Charlotta Sorenstam. I actually had someone send me video of like just like two weeks ago of the final round and it cut off right before I putted out of oh no <laughs> anyway, so I roll my putt up about this far short and I'm I'm now she's marked her second putt and now I, this is to win I got 18 inches to win because I'm gonna I'm not gonna stop and wait for her to putt I'm gonna keep going there's none of this you know wait to put out and take in the glory no no I'm just gonna keep going so I literally I could physically see my hand shaking And all I could think about was, you've done this a million times. It's just like the putting green at St. Charles. Just listen for it to go in the hole. And I hit it and it went in. And then I stood up and I, you know, the crowd cheered. The Canadians were going wild. And I kind of picked the ball up on the hole and went, hey. Because I felt so bad. She was crying. (laughs) (laughs) So the best part was, is that, you know, I come off the green and there are my parents. Oh, my God put in how many hours watching me you know how much money sending me to tournaments on equipment and and all of that and this was like payback like total payback for everything that they did through through me growing up involved so it was pretty damn cool pretty oh my god what an incredible story yeah (laughs) yeah that's uh, like if you can't write it any better right that's the best one by far yet (laughs) yes Yeah. That 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 story was better than Rudy. Really right now. The, what's that? Sorry. Said, that story was better than the movie Rudy. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> just five minutes. Yeah, and I remember Rudy flew his his parents to Notre Dame. That was a hell of a part of that movie. You forget. <laughs> oh my god! Oh jeez! See now, if I come back on again, I'm gonna have to come up with another story. Oh my god! <laughs> well, that's a hard one to top. <laughs> I think that's I have lot. one. I think I have one that would that would be a close second to this one. So. I bet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has nothing to do with me playing golf either, though. It does have something to do with my parents. Oh, what a tease! My God. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh. Keep them. <laughs> uh, Gail, this is such an unbelievable honor for us. So we were legitimately so nervous, and you're a legend in this country and in in, in in women's golf. We I actually before we go, actually, let's can we talk about sort of Canadian women's golf history because one of the yeah. things that we've been acutely aware of being three males, you know, uh, is not wanting to be overly bro-y with this podcast or overly male centric. Yeah. And we've really tried to make an effort to include as many females as possible, but sort of the state of, you know, Canadians, women, go- women's golf and the history of it and, and all that kind of stuff. Do you want, do you mind just sort of touching upon that? For a not little at bit? all. I mean, you go back to, like I said, Alexis Sterling way back in that time and, you know, fast forward to, to the, now the only Canadian in the world golf hall of fame is female Marlene mm-hmm. street, Marlene mm-hmm. Stewart street. And, you know, she lives across the state. So I'm uh, in, in the winter. So I'm hoping to get over and see her this winter. But, um, you know, when I was a kid, she had beaten Joanne Carner in a shell, wonderful world of golf. And because she was an amateur, she couldn't accept the prize money. So they mm. put it in a fund and it became the Marlene street fund that umpteen, you know, junior golfers got to benefit from that, including a Donco Jones and a, and a Lori Kane and you know even probably even a Brooke Henderson at this you know this point somewhere along the line there was some kind of bursary money that that affected that so 
you know, you, you come up th through the years and, and I think about my time at Lamar where we had five Canadians at one point and we wow. were the entire travel team because our oh. coach recruited heavily from Canada because she knew we were smart and we <laughs> could get in, we could get in state scholarship money. So <laughs> that was pretty, <laughs> school was a little easier down there than it is up in Canada. So, <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at, you know, uh, when I was on tour, we had Dawn and then we had Lisa Walters who was from Prince Rupert, British Columbia, like go figure on that. Jennifer Wyatt, who was from Vancouver. Um, you know, we just, we just had this really close group of, of that always supported each other. And then along came Lori. And then, you know, through the years coming and going with a lot of players that didn't have, some didn't have a lot of staying power, some did. And then fast forward to, this is great. Um, the year that Brooke Henderson as a 14 year old played in the Canadian, um, it was the CN back then, um, uh, now the CP uh, women's championship and it was at Vancouver golf club and Don and I were standing behind her in the practice round and she had a downhill downhill side hill lie out of rough about six inches deep and the pin was cut on the right hand side of the green and Don looks at me she goes seven yard cut and I go that's what I would do <laughs> and Brooke hits the shot she says high draw Jesus and it lands and it just rolls up softly and Don goes I never had that shot I go no <laughs> <laughs> never ever and she's good like it was crazy she was 14 years old like go figure wow. right um you know she has been she's such a delightful young woman and she lives up the road here in fort myers in the winter mm. uh, or in the off season and she's just such a uh, breath of fresh air and such a um, huge proponent for now new girls coming in in canada and i think even one of the bigger things is we now for the canadian national team have a female coach Salima mm. Musani. And I think that is one of the coolest things that Golf Canada could ever done. They took one of their own who played junior, amateur, college, professional golf, um, became a teacher, um, you know, became a coach, and now is leading this team. And the growth is amazing. I think I read last week that there's 57 players on the Canadian national team, men's and women's now, in different levels of it. And that's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you know, the U.S. the U.S. doesn't have a national team format and they are establishing one. The USGA is establishing one. And who did that? Who are they modeling after? Canada and Sweden. Amazing. That's, a, that's a pretty big compliment for for Golf Canada. And, you know, we we look at it as a, my era of player says, you know, we didn't have that help. We, right. we dug our dug, very Canadian. We dug our heels in and we did it our way and we got to where we needed to be. And, you know our job then was to, to push up and to, and to help the rest of the kids growing up. And that's just been, that's been so much fun to do and be a part of, and, you know, s spend five minutes talking to somebody and they're like, Oh man, you are, all, you're awesome. And I'm like, okay, like <laughs> just play golf. I just play golf. I put my pants on the same way, my bra on the same way, everything the same. <laughs> um, I was, I worked really hard and I was fortunate and I, I consider it a gift every day that what I got to do and what I still get to do. And, you know, the game is such a microcosm of life mm -hmm. that it, it's such a learning for life that it, what a great thing to put your kids into and, yeah. and to have players like Brooke now, you know, in this era to now have Brooke and, um, you know, some of the younger players that are coming up, it's awesome, you know, to see Mike Weir be named, you know, captain of the yeah, president's yeah. Of Royal Montreal. I might actually want to go to that event now that, you know, because it's in, you know, in Canada, Roy Montreal, Mike doing it. I think it's going to be so much fun because there are some phenomenal young men coming up too. Yeah. And it's all part of that growing program and, and having those heroes to look at that came from your own country. And, you know, you, you think about hockey and hockey was the same way forever and ever. We sure. looked up to those, to those hockey players that we wanted to be just like. So, yeah. Or at least Amazing. I did. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It seems more doable when you see people do it from your country. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, especially like with me, with Dawn, it was like, I, I beat her at college tournaments. And at the Canadian amateur in 1983, she, I led going into the final round. She ultimately won and I finished third and Marianne Lapointe finished second. I was like, okay, we went toe to toe and I held my own against her. I was pretty proud of myself. So amazing. You know, it, it's pretty cool to, to think back and remember all that kind of stuff. Oh. What a guest. We have to have you back if you'll come I'll back. Happy it would be, oh yeah. my I'll have God. you back for sure. Yeah. What a treat. Uh, Maybe I'll bring a friend. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 
It's a tease. Wow, that's another a tease. tease. I like wow. It. I, I... Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. You give him some. guess. To... Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. Female uh... side of you. Oh, perfect. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. I love that. Yeah, this, this is, is incredible. Such a such a treat to to meet you, and you were absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it was well, an well, honest well, honor well, to meet you. This was fantastic. Yeah, it was it was an honor to have you on. It's a lot of fun. And uh, honestly, I think I'm a better golfer now. <laughs> <laughs> and more fun to play with. Less pla- practice start swings. So we're, pos- we're thrilled. Yeah, start breathing the positivity, dude, and it'll it'll you know. Be good to yourself on the be kind to yourself on the golf course. I will try my best for sure. <laughs> That's perfect. Hey, and maybe you know, if I'm ever up in the Toronto area, we oh my god, home. well, that yeah. would be incredible. Yeah. That would be spectacular. Yeah. We would that love would that. Be super fun. And uh, I mean, not that well, I put my name in for tickets for the President's Cup. So if you want to have a drink at the President's <laughs> Cup, if I if I get those tickets, I mean, it's hard to say. I, yeah, I'm a nobody. But, I'm uh, going to be, be calling in favors for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks, Gail. Continued Thank success. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, guys. That was yeah. That was we do really hope to see you again. That would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. fantastic. Awesome. All right. Well, have All a right. great Take start care. of the year, Gail. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy yeah, New happy Year. New year. Yeah, you too. Happy New Year. Take care. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> see you. See Holy hell, that was uh, that was an all timer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. She's great. She's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, Hall of Famer. A literal Hall of Famer. She's a Hall uh, of Famer podcaster, man. I, was, like I, I would say, say so. Story, yeah. her, her, um, her story was incredible. Everything. And entertaining and informative. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I honestly serious. think I'm better at golf, though. Yeah. <laughs> you look better. <laughs> Feel better. I, I, I mean, you know. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Gail, if you're listening to this. It really, uh, yeah. it was, I mean, I know we just said it was fantastic about 14 times, but for yeah. good reason, it was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, her roots in uh, in Manitoba golf, we may have uh, two weeks in a row with uh, people with roots in Manitoba golf. That's a, that's a mm-hmm. tease for you listeners uh, for, for the next episode, but yeah. Um, Otherwise, thank you all. Uh, I hope you're doing well out there. I hope you're enjoying things. If you're playing, if you're not playing, it's uh, hopefully around the corner. Uh, while you're listening to this, I will have completed uh, day one of my bull moose tour in uh, Myrtle Beach, which I learned on this episode is nowhere near Florida, uh, which is great. To <laughs> well, I mean, it's closer than Toronto is. To it is. Florida. I was going to, I, sh- I should have said it. But, There'll uh, be some, uh, you'll get some decent weather out there, buddy. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I will have played uh, Tobacco Road, which is the golf course that's behind me right now. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully have a full report for uh, either the next episode or the episode after that. But uh, Bull Moose, here we go. All right. Enjoy your yes. trip, man. Enjoy Thank your trip, you. buddy. Think it's of us. Great, boys. I will all the time. All right. Think buddy. of this pure fire. thanks everyone for listening yeah thank you so much for listening and uh, please follow us on all the social medias and uh, like our podcast and uh, you know just please be our friends (laughs) Uh, be friends guys god bless you all enjoy your day fire and lightning for the new year (laughs)